the Scott Reed project and today we are going to do a bit of butchery with this fantastic little muntjac deer. Now as you can see it's not very big and I know a lot of my friends over the pond in the US and Canada I know you have your white tails are a lot bigger but this is one of the smallest deer native to us in the UK and believe it or not this is fully grown such a beautiful looking thing but to me this is fantastic eating so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the jacket off so I've just relieved this little muntjac deer of its jacket as you can see not a big carcass I imagine you can get hairs nearly that big but what we have got on here is this fantastic haunches going down the back those lovely clean loins or back strap as you call in the US and obviously the shoulders now what I wanted to do I wanted the shoulders to be nice and clean obviously what we normally do with those we dice them or ground them up uh, for mince but someone asked me have you got a recipe for a shoulder of venison and I've got one in mind so what I wanted was real clean shoulders so I asked my mate Coops who's my game guru who is a deer stalker gets all my game for me to shoot it he shot it in there nice clean kill which has resulted in these fantastic clean front ends so what I've done then is I've washed it as you can see it's set nice and firm which is fantastic for butchering so I'm just going to let it dry for a while then we're going to get it on the block we're going to have a bit of fun right first thing we're going to do then is going to take the legs off that first bone let's get my saw a moment just go straight through there's our haunches right onto these shoulders like I said I want to keep these shoulders whole I want to give this recipe I've got to go so what I'm going to do I'm going to just cut that breast off just to straighten it up and that'll get rid of any shot damage and the thing with carcasses this small is there is not a lot of meat on the breast and obviously the bones are harder to saw when there's no real meat on them but all I'm doing is straightening them up tidying them as you can see it's not cutting very well because obviously there's not a lot of meat on just straighten that up right there get these little shoulders off so I'm going to count one two three four five six ribs in straight through and saw straight through and there we have our primals our shoulders our lovely lovely loin and there our two haunches so this fantastic little loin just going to get my knife in follow the backbone all the way down nice clean strokes and then just gently trace the rib cage and just follow the tip of your knife over the ribs And you're left with your lovely little back strap obviously strip it that'll go into the trim just tidy that up and there's our prime piece of back strap so same with the other side down that backbone over the rib cage and you can do this with larger deer I know I get a lot of questions can you do this method with a white tail uh, you can obviously on a larger scale it would be more like butchering a cow but you could do this method no problem so again your strip you can get it 
that off and we shall tidy that silver skin up when we trim it all up finally. So there's our two money shots back strap. Put them there, get my trim pile over there. Right, onto these haunches. What I'm going to do is my saw, on through the pelvic bone, through those. And what I'm going to do, I'll trim off any bits of undesirable meat. And I'm just going to get my bony knife in, take out these little H bones. through the ball joint just with the tip of the knife and it starts looking a lot better already trim up any blood meat and what I like to do Let's take a shank off and there you have one bone in, little haunch, it's that easy. So we take the shank off, of the H bone, you can see in there that ball joint. Always using just the tip of your knife. Trace the bone along. And there, once it's trimmed, another haunch. So waste not, want not then, all I'm gonna do is just go in between all those ribs. You know, even if you only get a pound off something this small, you know, burgers, sausages, it's all prime meat in between each one. You'll be surprised by the time you've finished, just by trimming the bones, how much of a pile of trim you've got, which I will show you at the end. So, we've got our loin fillets or back straps which we're going to take the silver skin off in a minute we've got our bone in haunch our little haunch make a nice little roast for a couple of people our little shanks which I'm just going to bone out by just following the bone these will either go into dice or into sausage or even burgers although it's minus one Go on that pile, and that's shanks right, the shoulder. Now, like I said, a guy asked me if I got a recipe for shoulders of venison, and I have got one in mind, like I said. Will it work? I'm not sure, but what I want to do is get it off whole and try to see if I can get it boned out, put a few strings around. Then again, you know, if there aren't enough meat, it's not going to work. There's a shoulder. All we're doing is tracing down the rib cage, either side. and just following the neck. So same with the uh, shoulder bones as we did with the loin. We're just going to go take off any bits of meat and then in between each rib again. So looking at these shoulders then, I don't think I can do what I wanted to do with them. There's just not enough meat on them. There's not enough structure to them. So I'm just going to take the neck fillets off trim out the gristle because what I wanted to do really was 
bone and roll one and try and create a pulled venison shoulder dish but there's just not enough meat and as you can see because they're so small you can actually see bones through them so I'm just gonna break these down trim it out for dice for mince put it in my pile take that little hock off in the natural bend and then same as we did with those shanks just follow the bone and take our meat off so over the top of that blade bone as you can see not a lot of depth of meat on the other side expose it one side at the other side and there's a little ball joint just put your knife just under the tip of that blade bone and then under and it should come out in one there you go and it's just a case of along that one bone dog can have that one six there we have our bone shoulder to do with whatever we feel so I've just boned out that other shoulder then so all I'm going to do go through it take any bits out I don't want and then just dice and you know this was a small deer as I've said you know they don't grow much bigger than this and no before you ask any questions it's not a dog but what you do get is a prime prime wild product and you know even a kilo of venison here in the UK is about 13 quid a kilo so you know you will get some fantastic meat well, I shall show you when we lump it all together at the end how much we get off I'm just going to trim this pile through I have a trim pile for mince and this is my pile for dice obviously make some nice casseroles with the dice the trim might make some sausages or if you look on my other videos uh, the venison ragu oh it's a fantastic dish a great way to use up your ground venison instead of just burgers which there's nothing wrong with them don't get me wrong but you know it's winter time get a low slow cooked ragu going can't be beaten so these haunches fantastic there's just a couple of year but mudjack to me is one of the best meats of all the venison I've tried and I just love to steak it so what I'm going to do is break down this haunch take off the knuckle separate the top and the bottom round just going to trace that bone along trim any bits off I can go into my dice pile into my trim all I'm going to do take the femur out tidy that up actually I'm going to leave those together just cut a cross section dice them bits a bit of funk left on there what I'm going to do go through just cut some nice steaks and any of the ends odd shapes into the dice pile 
So the same with this haunch. Find that femur. There's a natural seam. And there's no stopping you guys with your white tails seaming out your haunches like this. They'll be a lot bigger, so you'd have real substantial cuts. Trim. And the odds and ends, tidy it up. Get your knife in. And always face up your meat presentation and through again. Lovely little steaks. So finish off dicing up that knuckle. And as you can see, out of all that, tiny, obviously, like I said, no bigger than a hair. Got a nice pile of prime diced on mince trim, our steaks, and this back strap. I'm just going to cut these in half to make a nice portion. I'm going to show you a quick way of taking the silver skin as well. So just through, not all the way through, and just slide your knife along. You get your, and your back strap, your silver skin stays in one place, and then just repeat. Just keep your knife where it is and wiggle the skin. Just like skin in a fish fillet. And you've got those two beautiful pieces of meat. So go, so if you're cutting it in half, stop at the skin, put knife flat, wiggle the skin. Same as the other. And just pick that up from where you left off. And there you go. Four nice little portions. And that's that little mud jack all butchered in a matter of minutes. So not a bad haul really from that little carcass. We got plenty of diced venison there, prime diced venison, our little pile of trim, which we're gonna mince. We got these lovely little steaks, and obviously the money shot, these loin fillets, back strap, absolutely fantastic cut of meat. So not bad considering. And there's a bit for my pooch there, look. Six, do you want to She's the luckiest dog going. So it just remains for me to say then, thanks for watching. And please subscribe, guys. And follow me on Twitter at the Scott Reed Project. If you haven't joined Twitter, join Twitter, follow me. And if you've got any questions, I can answer you straight away. And if you've got any ideas of anything you'd like to see me cook or butcher, please leave them in the comments or on my Twitter page and I'll get round to cooking them or butchering them when I can. So, thanks for watching, see you again.